How you going guys? I'm here with Colin in his uh, gyro Magni 915. Uh, so we're going to have a, um, a look at uh, first impressions after the first 90 odd hours. So um, we'll have a look around and find out some more info about this uh, gyro. How are you Colin? Hello mate, long time no see. How are you? Yeah, you well? really good. Excellent, excellent. Right, good morning. This is the 915IS Magni M24 factory built by Italy um, Gyro. If you order it today, you can have it in about six months, any color you want. Um, basically what they've done with this machine is they kept it the traditional M24, they kept it the same. All they changed, they put a 915 Radix in it. It comes in options with the 914 and the 912. Um, at altitude or sea level, uh, the 915 um, is just a fantastic machine. You put two people in here and uh, and she just takes off and you climb through all the way up wherever you want to be and the engine will manage itself. So if we just do a basic walk around, um, the color is a champagne color. The aircraft is uh, fully built in Italy and you choose what you want on it. And um, the fantastic thing about it, they can continuously talk to you. You can do whatever you want with the avionics. You can do with the propeller. You've got options with the, the full cowlings or not. And uh, inside you can go for the VIP version, which include the heater and so forth. With an enclosed cockpit, a lot of people will say it's very hot. And uh, that's absolutely not the case. It's actually almost cooler than the, the, the open one. Because with the open one, you wear a helmet and you put clothing on to compensate for the coldness up there. So we on the ground, it's pretty uncomfortable. Where with the Magni 24 side by side, you actually got quite a bit of air coming in. So what Magni has done on the inside is they, they made the passenger and the pilot independent. So you got these, these air intakes, and when you travel at 80 knots, that's quite a full on um, air intake. On the outside, there's also a permanent hole that obviously fresh air coming in and almost pressurizing the cabin for that purpose and keeping all the dust out and so forth when you especially when you when you when you start taxiing etc and on the inside there's also a vent that you can adjust accordingly and you can give yourself some fresh air so that's the three pretty important parts of it on the inside we've got an av map um, instrument that gives me basically my wind direction it gives you a plan view a sectional view the full ifas direction um, etc then you've got the garmin 6060 which talk to the JPI fuel management system. You got a radio. Um, I went for the Triggs 91s and 22s with a mode S transponder with ODSB in and out, as well as the Xeon XRX at the top there that picks up any other aircraft with six nautical miles or two and a half thousand foot below or above. Now with all that, normal three axis aircraft, you pre-rotate from the left hand side and you've got the normal three axis. So the AV8 part is really simple. The Magni has also put in a handbrake um, with the Bellinger uh, wheel, hydraulic wheel systems. Now these Bellingers are fail proof, they are fantastic. When you put that brake on, it goes nowhere. It's fully hydraulic and um, simple to use. And it's a big reminder, you know, when before you take off, it's right there and you don't just can't leave it on. The warning lights gives you door, it gives you pre-rotation, um, it gives you fire, it gives you all the electricals and so forth, which is really nice. It's in your face. Um, all the GPS receivers on the dash, they're all horizontal and um, no extra holes to be drilled. And it's just simple pull it through. And that's basically with the, the, the iPad. To control your music during the iPad A stage, you've got a remote control in the middle there where you just use your right hand and just flick to the next song or make your volume up or down. And the passengers got the same. On the front seat in there, you've got your light speed uh, Zulu 3s. Really good headset because if you open all the vents, you don't get that boop, 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 buffer. Endurance wise, the 2 litre tank with a bit of uh, packing space. And how this works, you feel up from the other side, you determine how many liters you have out of the 82 liters. 82 liters will give you approximately four hours or one bladder length of flight. And um, then you just land wherever you want to at a um, approved landing area. 
you fill up again and off you go. You can take those flexible bladders that you can roll up and store them in the nose. That gives you extra um, 80 to 90 liters. When you land, just walk to a servo. It either uses AF gas or 91, 95 or 98. Put it in the engine. With the 915 engine, it's pretty compact. You've got the turbo with the air cleaner on the outside. You can see the white wires there for the JPI fuel management system and the tanks are underneath the seats so that's on that's on the left hand side of the aircraft the duc or duck um, flash 2 propeller 90 degree offset a bit wider than the um the others for a bit more thrust uh, kamali recommended really good propeller it gives you awesome power and speed um, ground adjustable and uh, they come come absolutely um, with everything in the box out to do it on the right side you've got your electronics um, with all your um, fuses everything is pretty clear you get all the instruments in the in the front there as a display what's lovely about it it, it shows you all four cylinders exhaust gas temperature cylinder head temperature fuel flows oil pressure fuel pressure you can see all of that inside and if there's something wrong it flashes red both audible and visible so you can see what's going on which is awesome um, fuel takes about 3.3 liters of um, sorry oil about 3.3 liters of oil living at the sea um, flying around the ocean around about 30 hours we chuck it out put new ones in and every 50 hours we do a few plugs and uh, since then she's just been purring on the heater side of things if it's a bit condensated inside the hot air comes through the radiator um, come back on that blue pipe and it comes back as an air vent in the ground and it blows the hot air free of carbon monoxide it's nothing to do with the exhaust gases it's just the the oil cooler and the, and the radiator it's that air that comes back into the cabin which is really ingenious um apart from that mate it's um it's, it's just a lovely machine come highly recommended and uh with what 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 airborne has done is they put a little shade cover on the top there to just help us a little bit with the sun which is really nice you can either open it up or close it especially if you do a 90 degree bank and you want to have a bit of a look then you can so that one is really good mate that adds, that adds you know for your your oils your rags your tools on a long flight it's all outside the cabin so you don't have any odors of the hydrocarbons or anything like that in the inside so that's just the extra little um, compartment which is really good cubby all itself um in the cubby all you've got your adsb in and you've got a extra uh, what they call dual GPS receiver which you get all the GLONASS all that stuff that then detects all the GPS signals consolidate them send it to your iPad and you just do not lose signal. This definitely won't break, so you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> I actually put a fair bit of force into the other one. Is it?
about Magni or Gyros is I've flown a few, but what I enjoy about the Magni range, if you if you go to um, some of the previous ones I owned um, and you go and you waggle the tail of a Magni and you leave it, she's pretty, she comes back, you know what I mean? Like if I hit turbulence coming around a mountain, she's pretty rigid. And if I put it on a, or a one minute turn and I just put it at that angle and I let go, Magni stays there. It mm. stays in that one minute turn. Where my previous gyro with another name um, or another make, they uh, you had to fly, you couldn't, you couldn't leave the, the, the stick. If you go and do it just with a, uh, some of the competitors, they wiggle themselves to death. So when we were in Townsville coming around uh, uh, a mountain there in another make, you know, we were shaking so badly that we had to come right back on speed, pull the nose up, slow down, get out of the turbulence and go. Where when I flew to Uluru, um, the Magnes can handle quite a bit of turbulence and uh, that just sold me on this design. And uh, yeah, so that's what I can say from a stability point of view, from a trim tab point of view, obviously on the rudder, um, they put a trim tab, you adjust it what you need and it's far and forget. So what's the reason um, you're so passionate about gyros? Um, I suppose probably the short field landings and takeoffs. Um, when you, in an emergency, have to come down, um, where on aircraft you normally have to hit the ground about 60 miles an hour to keep on flying, where the magnets you can hit the ground most probably about around about 15. So that safety side of things um, always resonated with me and my passengers. Um, also, in normal conditions with high temperatures, low temperatures, flying underneath the clouds, we all of a sudden have your your, your shadows from, you know, between the, the non-shadowy bits and the shadow bit. Um, all you see is the RPM changes. You don't feel that, you know, um, from a normal uh, turbulent point of view. So they they are susceptible to turbulence, but about 10% of what a normal fixed wing aircraft is. Um, on the inside itself, you know, you can still, um, when you fly, you can well, you can't hover, but you can do a very, very close copy. And as long as you've got about 10, not winds you virtually can stay on the same spot to do your aerials you can do a very very gradual pirouette um, it's almost like a helicopter and hover at high altitude and you need about 50 feet to recover um, from that to get back into normal flying again which is very easy to learn um, so that, that's the, the big one the handling the ground handling into a shed or not they only one point eight meters wide and nine meters long with the blade included and about 2.2 meters in height. So to push it in and out of a hangar, 270 kilogram machine, that's perfectly balanced um, in the middle so that the, the wheels of COG is perfectly in the middle. You just lift it on the tail, push it on the prop, and you go into your place and you come out again. Very simple, close it, and uh, you got your pizza tube, you got your statics from the outside. You can see all the wind directions coming in when, during flight. And all that combined um, with these guys, the Magni Orion Plus, um, made in factory in Italy um, You can't beat it mate. It's just until you fly it and experience what I'm doing every weekend um, You just have to burn a bit of fuel on weekends and I've taken 36 people for a flight since I had it and uh, Total I've taken about 400 people and I've never had anybody the youngest were four and the oldest were 88 and uh, Never had a complaint to anybody to say <gasps> you know one of those during because there's no turbulence so and because I'm an exceptional pilot, most probably. <laughs> so, uh, how long have you been flying for? Uh, late uh, 2000, I started flying myself every weekend around about 2005, and uh, 2000, late 2004. So, all up about 16 years, and hopefully another 16. So, um, yeah, uh, we, we did just need to sell it to other people so they can feel and experience the, 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 the joy of being in a three axis or 3D world. So that's us, mate. Awesome.